to do the opposites book tag and I'll link her channel down below by the way she's lovely and I realize I've been doing book tags quite merrily until this point but now that someone has actually tagged me I feel less apologetic about it so there you have it uh, the opposites book tag I was a bit concerned that I wouldn't be able to do this one because I don't have full access to my books but I took myself to the back room of doom where there are boxes of doom and I unpacked a few of them so I have enough to do this book tag now. The first set of opposites I have to show you are the first book in your collection and the last book you bought. The oldest one I can find is Badger Island by Jonathan Guy. When I was a kid I loved any animal centric fiction such as Animals of Farthing Wood by Colin Dan. I was obsessed. And this I remember really loving as well. Enough that I may have stolen it from my library. I really want to believe that I bought it legitimately in a library sale, but I suspect otherwise. So that's the oldest, and the newest, the last one I bought, is The Edge of Never by J.A. Redmersky. The next pair of opposites is a cheap book and an expensive book. For my cheap book I've chosen City of Bones by Cassandra Clare because I won this one and the sequel City of Ashes in a booktube giveaway so it was free and it doesn't get cheaper than free. So I'll put that one down right about there. And for my expensive book I've chosen The Lost City of Z or Z, it's probably American, by David Graham and I think this one's being made into a film soon. Um, it was $16.99 and I remember paying full price for it, which I don't normally do, because it was signed and I thought it sounded interesting. But now I realise it's gotten a bit damaged in its box, so I'm sad about that. For my third pair I need to choose a book with a male protagonist and a book with a female protagonist. For the male protagonist I'm choosing Crusade by Elizabeth Laird. This actually has two male protagonists and is told with a split perspective. I remember really enjoying this book actually. I should reread it. And for my female protagonist, I chose Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. The woman in this, or this young lady, I suppose, is called Sorsha. And it's so romantic, so good. And Sorsha, for all that she is quite a gentle, quiet girl, she's tough. She's very tough. Love, love, love Sorsha. The fourth pair is a book that I read fast and a book that took me a long time to read. So for my quick read I would say Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian. It's only about 300 pages anyway but I just sped through this because I think I read it around Christmas time and it's a very family orientated book and heartwarming and just lovely. I recommend this. And then for the book that took me a long time to read, which may surprise and anger some, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I thought I was going to love this, it had great reviews, the writing is very good, it's accomplished as you would expect from Neil Gaiman, but I found it deathly boring, no pun intended. Um, I did not enjoy this book. Number five is a pretty book and an ugly book, and for pretty, I have to go with Cruel Beauty by Rosamond Hodge with this beautiful red rose with a staircase in black built in around the unfurling petals. I think this is genius. I won't keep going on about it. I'll, I'll put it there and I'll shut up. And then for my ugly cover I've gone for John Irving's A Prayer for Owen Meany. Now I, I get that there is a scheme going through all the John Irving books and that they're, you know, they're cohesive and they look good together but to me there's nothing attractive about an armadillo and I just think this book is ugly and that's all I can say. Number six is a national book and an international book. For my national one, pardon me, I've chosen Fly By Night by Frances Hardinge. Not because you can't get this one in America but because it is an English author and I don't know she strikes me as particularly English in this because the storytelling is quite eclectic and eccentric, the language is extremely good. She did read English at Oxford University, so it's what you'd expect. But sometimes her characters have 
dialects that remind me of the the old sort of cockney chimney sweep boy of days gone by and Mosca Mai, this girl here, she has quite um, a common accent in this which I like. So that's my national choice. And for my international choice, why not go with The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. The seventh pair is a thin book and a thick book. For my thin book, I've chosen The Legend of Spud Murphy by Owen Colfer and this is 90 pages long and moreover it's well spaced and illustrated as well, so it's tiny in fact. And then for my thick one, I've chosen Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and this is how many pages long? This is 766 pages. Is this the longest one in the Harry Potter series? It's the thickest I could find anyway. And if you put them side by side for comparison, there's Spud Murphy and there's Harry Potter. Insane. I nearly knocked this over a minute ago, so I'm going to keep my hands on it. Number eight is the final set of opposites. It is a fiction book and a non-fiction book. For my fiction book, I've chosen the first book in the Young Samurai series by Chris Bradford. This one is called The Way of the Warrior, and it's fictional in more ways than one, really. It's a bit ridiculous, and I wouldn't mind if it... It's just that, like, children are very impressionable, and I've seen Chris Bradford talk at the Children's Literature Festival in Bath. He's very engaging, very entertaining, kids love him and I'm pretty sure take his word as gospel when in fact he doesn't know much about Japan or Japanese history or martial arts for that matter so I really hope they don't believe everything he's The camera just cut out, it serves me right for bad mouthing an author. Anyway, Chris Bradford's Young Samurai series is my fiction choice. For my non-fiction choice I've chosen The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. This book kind of introduces you to the idea of putting blocks in your own path that stop you from achieving your creative goals and resistance takes many guises and this kind of opens your eyes to the manifestations of your own resistance and that was quite interesting. So those are all the books for my opposites tag. What would yours be? If you want to do this tag, link it below so I can have a look. Thank you Brie from Brie Book Reviews for tagging me and I'm signing off now. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!